get some shut eye. Oh, oh but I don't want to get up and turn off all the lights. Good night. Mostly sunny with a high of 92 and a low of 74. There's nothing on your calendar for tomorrow. Setting simply safe to home. Good night, Troy. Have you been curious about home automation but just don't know where to begin? because there's just so many choices out there, right? Come along today and I'm gonna take you on a tour of my own home and share with you some of the devices that I found to be most helpful. Welcome back to another edition of Tech Talk with Troy where we talk about everything to do with tech. It's been a while since I made a video, I know. And um, I think it's mostly been due to how preoccupied I've been with everything to do with COVID going on, wearing our masks like we're supposed to. And I hope all of you have been safe out there and are doing well. Um, we've had a lot of tragedy so far and that's very sad to see and listen to um, day in and day out. And I know that can affect people and you know their psychological well-being so I hope all of you are okay if this is your first time on my channel I would love to have you as a subscriber so please go ahead and you know what to do hit that subscribe um, button and the bell notification so you get notified of new videos that I make and um, for those that are already subscribers thank you very much for subscribing to my channel um, as you can tell I am passionate about tech no matter what it is so I thought today would be really good to take you kind of on a tour of my home of everything that I have collected through the years in regards to home automation. I do know, however, that things that you can purchase for home automation can be kind of costly, which is why I've taken many years to um, have a collection of my own things that I've purchased that have to do with home automation. So don't be daunted by running out and saying, oh my goodness, this is just way too much. Just take it one step at a time and kind of increase your arsenal of home automation as you go, unless you have the funds to do you know, all at once, be my guest. But I started out with just like three Hue light bulbs, which were automated. So, and I've grown, you'll see over time, into many other devices that really, um, enhance our way of li living some may call it being lazy <laughs> I don't know to me it's just kind of cool to be able to um, either control your house via your phone or now with um, Google and Alexa out there you can control it with your voice so I'll share some of that with you today so come along and I'm going to take you on a little tour of some of the devices that I've got in my own home First, I'm going to show you some of the hubs that I have to control the devices that I have in the house. So tucked away here in my family room, this is nothing great, and I actually would like to get like a shelf for these, but these are the various hubs that I've got going in my home. So the first one that I ever got was my Philips Hue hub, which is right here. So these control all the Philips Hue lights, then I've got my smart things hub for those that are familiar with the smart things um, environment then I've got my IKEA trad free hub which controls some of the lights and the blinds in my home then I've got the Lutron hub and finally I've got a Netgear Arlo camera hub here so all of these control the dif different devices in my house and right here I've got I had so many devices that I actually had to buy a cheap switch so that's a good point to make if you end up getting too many devices that actually have to be plugged in via a network cable 
you might want to invest in a cheap hub that you can plug into your router. So this takes all these devices in, on this table and takes them and puts them into my router with one wire. So it controls all the traffic between these hubs. So yeah, it seems like a little overkill, doesn't it? Now you know why I'm called Tech Talk with Troy. <laughs> so this is where the brains of everything happen to be. Okay, so let's go look at some of the other devices I have throughout the house. The first thing I would highly recommend that people get is a smart thermostat. So there's a few out there. The, the, I think the top two on the market are probably the Nest thermostat and the Ecobee. And I have a video that I've made on my Ecobee thermostat. So I'll put a link above. You can click on that to watch that and see a little bit more in depth about it. But it's really nice to be able to program your thermostat. It actually does save you money and you can program it for different times of the day when you're sleeping, when you're awake, when you're gone, and all of those settings um, will happen automatically for you. So it's very nice, don't have to worry about it, and even if you do need to adjust your thermostat during the day, you can do it through your phone, or also through your, if you have a, like an Alexa or a Google device, you can actually tell it to raise or lower it that way as well. So it is compatible with those, um, smart devices that you can connect to and of course they have their own app on the phone. It also is compatible with um, Apple HomeKit which I actually um, have for my own home. Some of you that may have Android devices don't use Apple HomeKit but I use iOS in my home so everything that I purchase I try to make sure that it's Apple HomeKit compatible and the Ecobee thermostat is. So Highly recommend the Ecobee. Watch my other video on that and you'll see why. Okay, on to the next device. So smart bulbs are one thing that I think are the basis for having a smart home. You'll definitely want to get some smart bulbs. There are many brands on the market. I do have some lighting in my home, such as the chandeliers that have multiple bulbs in them that I just did not want to spend a lot of money on each bulb having you know its own individual control. So I went with Lutron. They actually have wired switches that you can put in place of your existing home switches. This one right here, the first one, controls my dining room lights and it's actually wired to the um, existing wiring in the home. So I can turn my dining room on and off. You can't really see it, but maybe it's getting a little bit darker to my side over here. You can also dim those lights as well. The one next to it is a Pico remote and I've actually figured out a way and I have another video on that of how to do this. These are like five bucks or six bucks I think. They're real cheap. So if you have a Lutron hub and you want to use these Pico remotes they, they're just a remote control and they actually fit inside the same space as another switch. You can't even tell the difference, but it's not wired to anything. It's all done through the hub um, wirelessly. But I can program the center button and it will actually control the lights in my kitchen. So when I push it and they're already on, as you see behind me, they go off. And when they're off, I can push that button again and they'll come on to whatever I programmed it to do. So check out that video from my Lutron Pico Hub. Um, usage and you'll see how how it is that you can set those up as well so that's what I use my Lutron hub for I have a couple more of these throughout the house that I've set up but that's the reason I went with Lutron because some of, of the light fixtures I don't want smart bulbs in every single uh, fixture so it's better if you just get one this Lutron switch both of these actually can be done with your voice as well so I can tell Google or Alexa to turn on the dining room light and they will do it or set it to a certain percentage of brightness. So pretty cool. All right, on to the next device. The next device I want to talk about are door locks. So again, there's many out there on the market for door locks, all kinds of brands and different types for different types of budgets. I went with the August smart locks these are actually like, I don't know, I think the second generation, if I'm not mistaken. 
So they're not the latest and they're a little bit bulky, but they do the job. They're battery operated, so they run on double A's that you open this front panel and it takes four double A's. But once you have them on, you can also control this with Apple's HomeKit as well as their own application. I have this on my front and back door. What's also cool about this is I can share an electronic key with neighbors and friends and family. So it is a little cumbersome in my own opinion with them having to install the August app and then make their own account and then I share my um, access with them through their phone number. It's a little cumbersome. I'm sure there's others out there that are a little bit easier, but definitely want to say how nice it is to be like laying in bed and saying, did I lock the back door? Did I lock the front door? And then just get my phone and say, oh, no, and push a button and it locks automatically. Or I have it actually set to check automatically at 1230 at night too. So in case I even forgot to check, the house is going to lock it for me automatically at 1230 every night. So highly recommend automatic door locks. It's peace of mind to know that you can actually lock and unlock your door from anywhere as long as you have their app. Even when you're out and about, when you're not at home, you can use their app and unlock the door. Let's say somebody comes to your house and you want to let them in before you get there, you can unlock the door from your phone and let them in, okay? The next device I wanted to mention was my home security system, which is Simply Safe. So here we have the hub on my kitchen counter, and then you can also get these keypads. This is the second edition. I've, I've been with Simply Safe since they've had the first edition, and so they've greatly updated the whole system in the second edition with a lighted keypad. We actually have two of these, one downstairs by the garage door and one up in our bedroom. So when we go to bed at night, we can um, control the alarm system from there. Of course, they also have their own app as well. So you can use the app to control it um, either here in the house or when you're gone if you, if you need to. So there are many different security companies out there. I found Simply Safe to be very adequate and the price has never changed since I've started. I think it's $24.99 per month and that's with active monitoring and texting. So I love it, there's no contracts. But also now with the second edition, they have actually integrated with Google and I believe with Alexa as well. So you can actually arm the system with your voice in a couple different ways and so that's nice that you can do that before it didn't integrate at all well so um, now they've, they're starting to integrate it with other things so highly recommend simply safe I do have a video on their doorbell which I tried and unfortunately it did not work well so I switched it out and got the nest doorbell so I have two videos out there if you want to ch catch those the simply safe doorbell uh, I did have a review on that, and then I actually have one on the Nest doorbell that we'll talk about here in a minute, okay? So I'm here in my kitchen, and I went. I did want to mention briefly again about the Hue bulbs. I think I've invested in about 11 Hue bulbs and light strips, and in my kitchen I have three Hue bulbs. As you can see, I've got them set to different colors. Hopefully you can see that in the video. But it's nice to set a, a cool mood if you want or some you know lighting for special events if you'd like they also make bulbs that are a little cheaper that are only white and so I have those in like my um, formal living room that I don't you know really care to have colored bulbs for and even up in my bedroom I've chose to use just their white lights just to save a little bit of money and not use colored bulbs highly recommend these if you want to spend a little bit of extra money on the hue bulbs they've been very good. I've, I've owned them now for probably uh, six or seven years now. So they'll last you a long time. So under my cabinets, you can see I have colored lights as well. Those are hue strips. Later, I found some on Amazon that are Apple HomeKit compatible as well as with Google. And I have a video on those. They're called Santella. I don't know how you pronounce it. But um, they're much cheaper and they work just as well as the hue strips in my opinion but they do add 
more color to your room that you're trying to um, add some special coloring to. Onward to the next device. Another central thing in today's smart home are the use of these smart speakers. So I've invested in the Google ecosystem. I know Alexa's out there and some people prefer that, but um, I've gotten probably five Google devices throughout my home. Really nice. This is the Google Max, the Google Home Max. And so it has a, a nice size screen, also a camera, and a very nice speaker that you can play music on. And so I love how you can actually control devices throughout your home that connect to the Google ecosystem. So you can tell Google to turn your lights on, adjust your thermostat, um, play music from Pandora or your own playlist. Really cool. There's so much you can do with Google. I can't go into it right now. There's plenty of videos out there on YouTube that can explain what it all can do, but I would highly recommend a smart speaker in your home. Um, I know some people have a little bit of mistrust with smart speakers in their home because they think it's always listening. Possibly you could be giving away some of your own privacy, I suppose. But for me, the benefits outweigh the um, cons. So highly recommend some kind of smart speaker to go along with your home automated devices. So here we are in my garage and I actually have a device that controls the garage door and it's made by Chamberlain. So if you have a Chamberlain garage door, it will um, integrate pretty easily, if, especially if it's uh, you know a newer one. So this is the one of the Chamberlain devices that I've got hung up here. I think they call it the Chamberlain uh, MyQ. It's the hub. There's also another device that is over by the garage door um, lift, which actually is puts out the signal for the garage door itself that, that actually talks to your garage door. And then there's also one other piece to that where a little box that's actually connected to the garage door. Let's take you over there. So this is the sensor, this black box that actually talks to the Chamberlain MyQ device to know where the door is up or down or open and closed. So very important part or piece to the puzzle. But so cool, you can control your garage door from your phone or it also works with the Apple HomeKit devices. Um, I don't believe, it says it connects to Google, but I've yet to get it to connect and tell Google to open my garage door. So I don't know what's up with that. Maybe it's just my ignorance, but it's supposed to connect with Alexa and Google as well. So it's called the Chamberlain MyQ. They have their own app and everything. So highly recommend that one as well to control your garage door. In this room we have some IKEA light bulbs, like I said, to save a little money from buying the Hue bulbs. These actually can turn color and um, also do white. And the IKEA lights come with what's called these steering devices. So you can actually control the on off switch with this or asking Google or Alexa to turn them on and off as well. You have to have the trad free hub in order to do that. They also work with um, the Apple HomeKit devices as well. Also in my spare bedrooms, I have a small Google Home Mini. It's over on this nice stand over here. So each of the bedrooms can play music. You can have the Google answer any questions you might have, set alarms, set timers, um, just whatever you can do with the Google devices, you can do with the Google Minis. And of course, like I said, those are cheaper than the ones with the screens. So that's why they have them in my spare bedroom so guests can use them when they're here. It comes in very handy. One thing that I've really enjoyed is having these IKEA smart blinds behind me. So I purchased two for my bedroom and I'm considering getting two more for another um, place in my house in my family room. So it's nice at dusk. I have it set for everything to close automatically and if I want to take a nap or something, I can just tell Google to set it so I'm going to take a nap and it will close the blinds automatically. So 
Of course, they do come with a remote control, but you do need the trad free um, hub like you do for their lights. Everything goes through there and their application as well. These are the IKEA automatic blinds, and I'm not going to try to pronounce their names. But I do have a video, I'll put the link up above here so you can watch that and my review on how to use them. Okay? So here by my bedside, I have another Google Home device. This is the smaller version that does not have a camera. So the one I showed you before does have one, it's bigger. So it does connect with all your other devices and you can give commands here and play music and so forth. Just like all the other Google connected devices that you may have in your home. So I use this as a um, alarm clock as well. So that helps me get up in the morning. So that's why it's right here next to the bed. Okay. So one rather inexpensive thing you can add to your smart home are the use of these smart plugs. So there's many different types on the market today. And I actually have three different brands that I use in my home. This one happens to be from iHome. I also use some from iDevices as well as Wemo. They all connect to Google. They all connect to Alexa and Apple Smart, or I'm sorry, Apple HomeKit. So this works great for things like fans or other lamps that you don't want to buy a smart bulb for and really adds a nice inexpensive way to add to your smart home. One awesome feature that you can add to your smart home is a smart doorbell. And I just did this this year a couple months ago. And I have two videos out there. One where I tried the Simply Safe smart doorbell and I could not get it to work properly. Unfortunately, I wanted to use it so badly because I already used their service for my, my uh, home security system. But because it wouldn't work, I tried multiple ones that just would not up the, update the firmware. I ended up going with the Hello Nest doorbell and couldn't be more happy. So also check out that video. I'll put the link up above as well that you can watch. And so far this thing has worked like a charm. I love the face recognition that it has with it. So when somebody walks up to my door that's been here before, I can actually label them in the application. And when they walk up, it'll say on all of my smart devices, when they ring the doorbell, Hey, Joe's at the doorbell. Or Joe just rang the doorbell. So you know who it is just by face rec facial recognition. Super cool. And even um, all of the um, alerts that you get, you know, could be sound alerts or even motion alerts that you can set. It has zones and everything. So again, check out that uh, video that I've already created for this doorbell. And that's another thing that I would highly recommend to add to your smartphone. It just get, adds that extra layer of security because you've got that camera going on it. 24-7. Uh, Highly recommend the Google Hello Nest doorbell. Another thing I wanted to put a plug in for was the Arlo security camera system, which you can see up here right behind me on my outside back patio. I actually have five of those in, in one system that connect to the hub. They have newer models out there now that um, you can get better, different alternatives. Um, the only thing I do not like about this style is that they seem to run out of battery too quickly and those lithium batteries can be expensive. But still, no matter which brand you might want to invest in, I think an outdoor security camera is a great addition to your smart home. So whether it be Arlo or any of the other ones on the market out there, highly recommend um, adding a security camera system to your home so that you can have that extra sense of security to protect you and your family and your belongings. Here I am back in my garage. I know I already mentioned the MyQ garage door by Chamberlain controller, but I also wanted to mention the SmartThings hub and all the devices that go along with SmartThings. I placed a SmartThings sensor inside my garage which also helps me do triggers. This is the white box up here on the garage door. It can also sense whether the door is open or closed. It also has temperature readings. So I like to use this in the winter time to send me an alert if the garage temperature gets below a certain level because I've got my water heater and other things out here in the garage and I don't want things to freeze out here. So if it gets too cold, I can take action. But there's all kinds of sensors that SmartThings offers. So they also have their own line of, of 
sensors such as door and window sensors that you can get to protect your home that way. Um, but of course I already have my own alarm system so I don't need those. But they have water sensors and all kinds of things. So I, I would recommend those as well. So another thing to um, consider when you're putting your smart home together is Samsung smart things. So thank you for joining me on my home automation tour today. I hope it was beneficial in giving you some ideas of where you could start in adding some home automation to your own home. Of course, for those of us like me that are kind of on a tight budget, I started gradually over many years. That's the best approach, I think, just by a little bit at a time. And eventually you'll have a good arsenal of things that will help make your home automation life a lot easier. So check out those videos I mentioned before if you want to kind of do a deeper dive into some of those devices that I um, have videos on. And if you're not yet a subscriber, I would love to have you as a subscriber. So please hit that subscribe button and the bell notification to get notified of new videos when they come out. So until next time, thanks for watching another episode of Tech Talk with Troy. See you later.